Good morning, and welcome to worship with us. It is December 13th. It is the third Sunday of Advent. As you can see, it is the Sunday of joy, and I'm hoping that you're doing a, an Advent candle at home. Today is the day to light the pink candle if you have it. And uh, I hope that's a meaningful experience for you and your family. I want to remind you that we are not meeting in person. The joint sessions will gather on January 4th and uh, discuss whether or not it's uh, safe for us to get back together. So that's in January. So until then, everything is going to be online. Please remember that if you have a gift that you want to give, you can drop it in the mail um, and we will uh, be happy to have that. Let us pray. Wonderful God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the way you fill our lives with joy. Wonderful God, we gather to worship you in a way that is new and different and yet a way that we can gather together. Help us be your body, even online. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that are given by our members and friends. They mean so much to us. All the time and the energy, the imagination, and financial gifts as well. We thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. You will find the liturgy for this service on our Facebook page, on another post, or in the description of the YouTube video. Would you join me in the call to worship? The promised one of God brings good news to the oppressed and binds up the brokenhearted. We are witnesses to the light of Christ. The promised one of God proclaims liberty to captives and release to prisoners. We are witnesses to the light of Christ. The promised one of God comforts all who mourn and gives a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, holding fast to what is good, we are witnesses to the light of Christ. Now I want to take a couple of minutes <clears throat> for our Advent practice. Today we continue our practice of body prayer. We have our breath prayer, which is a body prayer, when we use a word or a phrase with each movement of our breath. Inhale with a word, then exhale with a word. We have our centering prayer, which is our breath prayer combined with our mental exercise of calming our inner voice. As we come to pray, it is important to calm all the random thoughts that are running through our minds. The first Sunday of Advent, we learned about a body prayer in which we centered ourselves and then we listened to our body. In this prayer, we try to be aware of what kind of issues might be going on in our body. We also pay attention to how we feel about our bodies. Are we ashamed of our physical form? Have we been told that we are ugly and we have believed it? In those cases, we suffer from anxiety that builds up in us until we can't hold it anymore. So, we will do ourselves a favor by dealing with the lies that we have been told and learn to love the body that God created for us. Now, last week, we talked about another body prayer, the walking prayer. We can practice this by praying 
when we walk or jog or run. I have friends who feel like they are closer to God when they go for a run. Your body knows how to run or walk, and the muscle memory kicks in so that your mind can concentrate on listening to God. I hope you will try this sometime. It is a good way to get closer to God. Now today, I want to encourage us to take time to incorporate a body prayer in our worship. We find throughout the scriptures the concept of lifting our hands to the heavens in praise and thanksgiving. This is a body prayer in which we use our body in a way that offers to God our whole self. Perhaps you can practice while we sing our praise songs. Take a couple of deep breaths. And prepare ourselves for our songs of praise. Our first song is We Are Standing on Holy Ground. We'll sing it through twice. We are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in His presence on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around let us praise Jesus now we are standing in his presence on holy ground Ah, nicely done. And now, Sanctuary. <clears throat> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, Right and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Right and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. And now we come to our time of confession old habits, and new wrongs wear ruts through our lives and relationships. But God is able to restore us. Like water coursing through a desert, the waters of baptism flow through us, reminding us that we belong to God and are raised to new life. Will you join me in the prayer of confession? Merciful God, you love justice. Why then do we persist in wrongdoing? You have given us the gift of your Spirit. Why then do we quench the Spirit among us? 
You have given us the words of the prophets and the Christ himself. Why then do we despise and ignore what we have heard from you? You have sent the light into the world. Why then have we loved darkness rather than light? Forgive us, restore us, till and tend us as your garden until righteousness and praise spring up for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. In Jesus Christ, the Lord has done great things for us. Even if we have gone out in tears, God brings us home shouting for joy. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Alleluia, we are forgiven. Amen. And now, our song of response. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Go without end, go without end. Amen. World without end, go without end. Amen. World without end, go without end. Amen. As it was in the is now and ever shall be. Amen. And now we come to our prayer for illumination. Please pray with me. Holy One, giver of life and light, as your word is read and proclaimed, illumine our hearts and minds that by the power of the Holy Spirit, our lives may reflect God's glory. Amen. Our scripture lessons for today come from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 4, and verses 8 through 11. And also, John, the first chapter, verses 6 through 8, and then 19 through 28. Listen for the word of God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display His glory, they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For God has clothed me with the garments of salvation. God has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes 
what is sown in it to spring up. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. And now our reading from John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. And they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Did you ever get socked in the arm? I did. When I was about 10, my sister, who is three years younger than me, hit me in the arm. It hurt. I wanted to hit her back. Did you ever get in a quarrel with your siblings back in the day? We are so funny, humans, because we learn to dish out pain in order to, well, try to stop the pain we are feeling. I don't think that the punching would have ended if there hadn't been parental intervention. You see, I had called my sister a name, and had stuck my tongue out at her. It hurt her feelings, so she hit me. Of course, this was all observed by my mom, who stepped in and separated us. I was sent to my room till my father got home. Sometimes, we like to think of the Old Testament as being the Wild West. But in our lesson from this morning, we find a word that is used, vengeance. That reminds me of a scene in the movie, The Princess Bride. You see, in the movie, if you haven't seen it recently, you should find it and watch it. The Princess Bride. Vizzini has been using the word inconceivable. And Inigo says, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> I, too, have been caught in a situation in which I thought that the word vengeance meant to seek revenge. So it caught my eye when I saw it in our lesson from Isaiah. I was using the modern-day understanding of the word vengeance. When we see the word vengeance, don't we think of inflicting injury or harm in retaliation? Sure, that's how we use the word today. But that has not always been the way that vengeance has been used. When I got my Bible dictionary out, and it was produced not long ago, only in 1962, the entry for vengeance establishes the history of the idea from the scriptures. And it says, vengeance, the restoration of wholeness, integrity, to the community, by God or man. The author goes on to show that the Hebrew word is one of the legal terms used in the scriptures. 
well, I wanted to learn more about this legal term, thinking of the idea of an eye for an eye. And it turns out that as the people were establishing a rule of law, it was important to limit how far one could try to fix the death of a loved one. You see that at one point in the scriptures, if a death was caused, then it had to be paid for with a life, the life of the guilty party. Those were the rules. In fact, there was no place for forgiveness. Now, later on, when society had developed a more centralized government, the idea of forgiveness came into play, and people didn't have to die if they caused the death of someone. The place of refuge was established in those days so that if an accident happened and someone died, the accused could find a place to stay safe. <clears throat> it turns out, however, that the idea of capital punishment was never applied to God. God is never referred to as being the one who will punish those who have done wrong. Time and time again, we do see in the New Testament that vengeance is reserved for God. God will bring about restoration in situations that require, by human standards, payment for wrongs done against someone. Now you might remember that when Jesus is talking about the way things used to be, he uses the term eye for an eye. And Jesus suggests that we turn the other cheek. That we stop the revenge and try forgiveness. We see the same thing in our lesson from Isaiah. We find that the things that will happen on the day of the vengeance of our God is bringing good news to the oppressed, binding up the brokenhearted, proclaiming liberty to the captives, and the release of the prisoners. It is the year of the Lord's favor. Our example from the scriptures today is that we seek reconciliation, the restoration of wholeness for the whole community. Reconciliation must start at home. We must start with ourselves. Then, like the ripple on a pond, that wholeness works outward to affect everyone it touches. In this season of Advent, while we are waiting, perhaps this is the perfect time to work on the reconciliation in our lives. Take a chance. Face your fears. Reach out to that estranged person. Yes, they hurt you in the past. And that pain is yours to deal with. You will never be whole until you deal with your pain. Our faith calls us to seek a reconciliation. There may not be forgiveness at first, but just opening up the idea of communication will allow the Holy Spirit to soften your heart. The Holy Spirit can soften the heart of the one who hurt you. Now, more than ever, we face a ticking clock. We don't know how any of us are going to react to the coronavirus when we get it. We could lose loved ones at any moment with this pandemic just out of control. Take a page from the prophet Isaiah. Allow God to help you find wholeness in your life. Prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. And now let's sing our next hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Why. Oh, 
immortal, invisible, God only wise, in might inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains, high soaring above, Thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. Now we come to a time for announcements. On Sunday evening, the joint sessions of our yoked congregations agreed to continue to suspend our in-person worship until January 4th. We want to provide for your safety and your connection, so we will continue to produce an online worship experience. It's on our Facebook page and it's on YouTube, as well as printed bulletins and sermons. Now these printed materials are available on the front door of the church. Look for our schedule to remain the same worship on Sunday, and we will have an online service on December 24th. There will be more information coming about our need to stay connected, if only by video or phone. We would like to include as many members and friends as possible on video clips for future services. Prayerfully consider being a part of this ministry. Thanks. We have another announcement, and that is that we're going to put together a wreath of handprints. There is green construction paper on the front door of the church in Torrington. If you could come by and pick up a piece of that paper and then trace your hand and then cut it out, or if you're not handy with scissors like me, uh, you can just put your name on, on there and stick it back in the uh, envelope, and we'll take that out, we'll cut it out for you, somebody who's good with scissors, and, and then we're gonna paste them all together as a wreath and put it on the, on the door of the church. We think it'll be a good way for us to show that we're all together and we're all in this together and that we want to celebrate the coming Christ. So, come by the church, pick up, um, some green construction paper, and trace your hand. Thanks. And now it's time for our Minute for Mission. A love story. The Reverend Ken Tracy has spent much of his more than 30 years with the PCUSA, helping congregations work through conflict and revitalize their membership a mission grounded in love. If you have the opportunity to talk with Reverend Tracy for even a few minutes, it's easy to understand why he would be really good at tackling difficult conversations and helping others heal. He laughs easily and has an infectious personality that quick, pick up. He laughs easily and has an infectious personality that quickly draws you in. Along the way, he built a legacy of love and faith with a focus on ministry and service within the church. His wife, Carol, has been by his side throughout all these years. His first call was at the Pleasantville, Pennsylvania Presbyterian Church. He then went on to work within Boulder Presbytery, now known as the Presbytery of Plains and Peaks, and served for seven years as the executive of the Utah Presbytery and then as the pastor of St. James Presbyterian Church in Tarzana, California. Following 
the North Ridge earthquake in 1994 that damaged the St. James Sanctuary, he went on to lead a congregation in the Alaskan village of Heidelberg, taking him and Carol to the smaller churches he loved to serve. It was in Alaska that Carol got very sick. We made three trips to Seattle to see doctors, and the shared grants handled by the Board of Pensions picked up 100% of our expenses, he says. They paid for our flights, hotels, meals, rental car, whatever we needed. The doctors discovered that Carol had significant damage to her lungs due to an exposure to black mold. So they turned again for help to the Board of Pensions which is funded in part by the Christmas Joy Offering. Now they live in Monta Vista Grove Homes in Pasadena, a retirement community for retired pastors, church workers, and missionaries. Carol now lives in skilled nursing, and I live in independent living. Her room is about 30 feet from mine, Reverend Tracy explains. I'd never heard of a shared grant until I was the executive at the Utah Presbytery, and a member needed some support. I didn't realize then that years later it would also help my family. This is a love story, not just about Ken and Carol's love for each other, and love for the mission they had served side by side for so many years, but also about God's love and the love we show with our gifts. Half of the Christmas Joy Offering goes to the assistance program of the Board of Pensions to help current and past church workers and their families in their time of need and critical financial need. The other half supports education and leadership development at Presbyterian-related schools and colleges, equipping communities of color. Please give generously, for when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Let us pray. In our passionate leaders, we see the echo of your passionate love for us, O oh God. Thank you for the gift they are and receive our gifts to support church leaders, past, present, and future. Amen. And now we come to a time for a ministry with children. So kids, gather around the computer. I want to ask you a question about quarreling with your siblings. Have you ever kind of gotten into a fight with each other? Oh, man. It's perfectly normal. It's natural, in fact. We feel like if somebody does something wrong to us, we have to get back at them. Well, that's how our brain works. It's one of the survival modes. But did you know that Jesus said we should turn the other cheek? Yeah, what does that even mean, turn the other cheek? Well, in Jesus' time, it was not uncommon for the soldiers who were occupying Jesus' homeland to strike people on the cheek, like this. Now, the soldiers were allowed to do this with the back of their hand because they were soldiers and they were trying to keep the peace and order in a place where the people didn't want them at all. So it was a very difficult situation. And so, if we got slapped on the cheek, Jesus suggested that we turn the other cheek. Now, look at the orientation of my hand and my other cheek. It's an open hand against the cheek. It's not the back of the hand. It's the open hand. Now that would be illegal. If a Roman soldier slapped you like that, 
it would be illegal. But it would also show that Roman soldier that you were stronger than they were, that you had faith in God, that you could turn the other cheek and in a way show them that love conquers all. Now that is a difficult, difficult lesson to learn. And there are many of us who are old and getting older who have never really learned that. You see, we don't live in a time when people slap our face. So we really don't understand it at all. But we do understand that love is stronger than hate. And so it's important for us to love whenever we can. Now, how does that look? Oftentimes, it looks like leaving, moving away from a heated situation. Oh, we want, in the worst way, to smack them back. But if we stop, if we say no, and we walk away, we have just shown them that there is a better way than retaliating by striking someone again. So it's important for us to remember that Jesus said, turn the other cheek and show them that love is stronger than hate. And it doesn't matter who you're working with here, whether they're your same age, whether they're younger than you, whether they're older than you, you can always stop and get away and show that love is stronger than hate. And that's our lesson for today. Thanks so much. Hey, let's sing our next hymn together. What do you say? Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. your heads, ye mighty gates. Behold the King of glory waits. The King of kings is drawing near. The Savior of the world is here. Cling wide the portals of your Make it a temple set apart from earthly use for heaven's employ, adorn with prayer and love and joy. And now we've come to a time for prayers of the people. You do know that we have prayer chains. We have a phone prayer chain, and we have a text prayer chain, and we have a email prayer chain. If you would like to be involved, call the church office and let us know. We'll get your phone number or your email address, and we'll add you to the list. Um, it's a good way to keep in touch with others in the congregation. And it's a good way to keep in touch with what's happening in the lives of many of our members and friends. So, join a prayer chain. Today, we want to pray for people who are affected by the pandemic. And my heart really goes out to the medical professionals. You hear story after story on the radio about how those medical professionals are having to go home and quarantine because they might have been 
exposed to the virus. And that makes it that much harder on their coworkers. Because now, instead of three people, there's only two people. So remember our medical professionals who are struggling for hours and hours and hours each day, often double shifts, to help people in the healing process. Let us continue in prayer. Wonderful God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for bringing joy into our lives. Lord, we lift up all those affected by the pandemic. It is such a nasty virus. And people react in different ways. Some have had it and didn't feel any effects at all, while others have had it and have died. And it's all confusing, and there's so much being talked about. Help us to find peace and joy with your Spirit, that we may share your love with all those around us. And we thank you for your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you are about your business this week, remember that vengeance belongs to God. But I think we can help too. Because vengeance means a healing, a restoration to wholeness. The opportunity for God to reach into our lives and take us by the hand and say, let me help you. Let me help you with the hurt and the pain. Because God cares. God cares about what's going on inside of you. God cares about your relationship and the relationship you have with others. And know that God cares and that we can share God's love. And do it in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Have a great week. I love you. Thanks.